little surprise for you. Hello everybody and welcome. This is not a belated easter egg, no, it's just a really huge fairing that might not have even been necessary, I just like to build it anyway, you see what I mean later. Anyway, we're going to Duna today and I want to show you a few things. First of all, how hard it is to land a plane or any aerodynamic vehicle on Duna because of a few reasons and also the plane itself that you can see here. Yes, it is a plane. It's not a single stage to orbit plane like many try to build and also successfully build and fly to Duna, then, but I wanted something different because I did not have any need for any air breathing engines on that for what the real purpose of this vehicle actually is. So I stuck with these very efficient engines on the back. I think the Wolfhelm, that's its name. Well, it's modeled after the Apollo service module engine. And we're already off to our interplanetary transfer burn. So what we're trying to do here, of course, is blast away from our home of Kerbin and get to Duna. And here we go. So yeah, we got an encounter and it's close enough to the planet and we can enjoy this partial eclipse that we just witnessed while we drift away from our home planet of Kerbin. And after skipping a few hundred days ahead, we are now on close approach to Duna. And its gravity is sucking us in, figuratively speaking. Alright, I'm going to lower my periapsis. The reason for that is, uh, since I have all of these aerodynamic surfaces, I'm going to try and aerobrake, meaning using the atmosphere to slow my descent, which many of, you, many of you may already know. But yeah, my plane building skills are not really that great. As you can see, they might look good, but they fly really bad. <laughs> and you'll see what I mean right about, well, in a few seconds. So the problem is, since Duna's atmosphere is so, well, not dense, and you're coming in with really high speed, it's hard to land on here. So, well, the inevitable happened. Cue the music. Again. 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 All right. So this was then my final and successful attempt for doing so. You really have to keep an eye on your speeds and on the, the orientation of your plane. It really has to land very level on the surface, relative to the surface, of course, not to the nav ball. <laughs> and then I almost thought, okay, this is going to be another crash because I turned backwards and it took ages to break. And then I realized, hey, I got that en those engines. Why don't I use them to slow myself down? And I did. So yeah, we finally came to a halt. And then it was time to begin the mission proper. Because you see, this little contraption here has a few tricks up its sleeve. Yes, we're opening some cargo bays and we're getting rid of that front landing gear. Why, you may ask? Well, there is a reason for that. And that reason is hidden in the first cargo bay. And... It's wheels! Yes, ever since um, KSP got the Breaking Ground DLC expansion, there is the option to use rovers and attached scanning arms to scan surface features and gather more signs. Problem is getting the rover to all of those surface features, because driving around is still very tedious. 
But if you have, a, say, like a plane that you could use multiple times to get from one of these surface features to the others, or to other regions where some surface features might be more prominent than in others, well, that could be very interesting, wouldn't it? Okay, so we have extended all of our arms and antenna, not the solar panels yet, we still have enough battery. And well, what are we going to do with this husk of a plane? Well, in order to get to all of those biomes and surface features, we need, of course, fuel. And what better way to get fuel than to just extract it from the surface of the planet itself? So that's what exactly what we're going to do. While we're doing that, we found a surface feature. <laughs> it would have been funny if I found that rock where I crashed my planet on, uh, my plane on earlier. Crashed a planet? Well, that would have been a great explosion. Uh, anyway, while our brave scientist is exploring this nice little thing, we're also scanning it with our scanning arm. Of course, the largest one, because it yields most of the science, the most science, so to speak. Okay, now we're done with that, we're going to head back to our plane or to some other sur surface features, whatever you like. Alright, uh, let's imagine we already gathered a few of the surface features and then we're going to use our plane that has been refueled to go to some more and so on and so forth. So what are we going to do or how are we going to proceed if we want to get back, of course, because hey, all of those science points and astronauts and surface samples want to get back to current. Well, in order to lower the plane, I had to play with the spring and dampening settings in the landing gear, and then the docking ports would engage and we could close everything up and turn it back into a regular plane. Yeah, so now it's time to get back Home. This thing has, well, I think more than three and a half thousand meters per second of delta V when fully filled up. So that's way enough to get outside of the atmosphere of Duna and get an encounter with our home planet of Kerbin. That's also the reason why I use these very efficient engines. Because even in their, their very, even though they're very bad in atmosphere, since Duna's atmosphere is so well, not dense, it uh, is still enough for the plane to get enough power to reach orbit easily. And orbit we reached, there we go, and after some time we waited for our Kerbin encounter, we are now going to blast back to our home planet. Yes, there we are. And of course, as usual, we're going to skip ahead because this takes, well, the most important resource in your life. Time. It's not money, it's not anything else. It is time. Believe me. Anyway, okay, we are already here and we're lowering our apoaps, still a lot, periaps, of course, a little bit because, of course, we want to use the atmosphere here as well to save some fuel cockpit lighting up a little bit, almost exploding, and yeah, I really need to look into how aerodynamics actually work, especially in that game. It's For me it's just like, yeah, it looks good, and it's probably going to work somehow. Alright, so using the remainder of my fuel to get a nice circular orbit, and then trying to aim for the space center. Which is a challenge at any any time of the day, but yeah, since this thing behaves erratically during re-entry, or I'm just such a bad pilot. I was happy that I, I got at least close <laughs> to the KSC. And well then I thought, well, we still got some some speed going on over here. Maybe I can roll <laughs> toward towards the space center and yeah, but I would have needed more fuel for this, so I decided, well, hey, it's not that far. I could use my built-in rover ability to rove over there and not walk home. 
So let's get those wheels back out and let's get the rover section out and somebody else can get the plane section. So let's head back with a nice relaxing drive home. Or not. Damn it! If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel for more and follow me on my social thingies. The links are in the description. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.